Good evening and a welcome to Staff Gymnasium on the campus of Brockton High School in the City of Champions for this BCA Sports presentation of Brockton Lady Boxers Basketball. Tonight the Lady Boxers welcome in the Quincy Presidents to Staff Gymnasium. My name is Peter Zimbor, joined alongside my broadcast partner Natalie Torres and we'll have the call of tonight's game starting 5-4. First, the Brockton Lady Boxers. Per the norm, it's number 11, Shin Chanel Melton, number 21, Dominique Coley, number 22, Tatiana Diaz, number 23, Chantel Jordan, and number 33, Christian McDuffie for the Quincy Presidents, number 5, Alyssa Lydon, number 23, Colleen Andrews, number 32, Nicole Jorgensen, number 34, Courtney Ryan, and number 41, Alicia Dunbar. 7.50 left to go here in the opening quarter. No score yet between Brockton and Quincy. Both of these teams entering this game with a record of 2-0. Natalie, you know what that means. There you go. One of them is going home with a loss. Someone's O must go. Brockton has looked impressive here in the early goings of the season. And despite the countdown of members of the Quincy bench, it appears that the Quincy presidents did not know that the shot clock was winding down and waited until the last possible millisecond to get that shot off, they missed, so we're still scoreless 0 0 with 7.15 left to go here in the opening quarter. One thing I like about both these teams, Natalie, and both these schools, their nicknames are very apropos to both teams and the communities that come from Brockton, the Boxers, obviously Rocky Marciano, Marvelous Marvin Hagler, Quincy, the presidents there, famous for John Quincy Adams and Samuel Adams. Brockton draws first blood, first layup of the game. 6.50 to go in the opening quarter. Brockton leads by a score of two to nothing. Too many Wildcats, too many Bulldogs, too many cliche names for high schools out there. I like presidents and I like boxers. It sounds great for both of them. Come on, Cody. We call Brockton the lady boxers. I guess we'll call Quincy the lady presidents. There's not been a lady president in the United States yet, though. Not yet. Hopefully in a few, in a few years we'll have one. Maybe Hillary Clinton. Maybe she'll run again. <laughs> Tatiana Diaz bringing the ball up for Brockton, taking a look at what options us running here. There's a foul called by called against Courtney Ryan for Quincy on that last possession. Ball goes out of bounds. This will be Quincy President's ball. Alyssa Lydon bringing the ball up for Quincy. Tries to get it over to Nicole Jorgensen right in the hands of Christian McDuffie for Brockton. McDuffie to Melton. Top of the key to Diaz. She'll take a look. <laughs> Jump ball is called as Brockton and Quincy get tied up for the ball on the floor. Possession arrow is going to point in favor of the boxers. 6 11 left to go in the opening quarter. 2 0 is your score. Brockton with the lead. And Christian McDuffie down low. No good deflected by Quincy. The Quincy player who deflected it steps out of bounds, that being Courtney Ryan. So Brockton will regain possession of the ball from underneath. A little bit of a discrepancy with the shot clock. It's now set at 12 with 6.08 left to go in the opening quarter. Brockton leads 2-0. Melton looking to inbound the ball. Gets it into Diaz. Diaz dishes it over to McDuffie. Six seconds on the shot clock. Tries to pass it inside the paint to number 21. Dominique Coley goes out of bounds off Brockton. Ball now in possession of Quincy. Noel. Noel. Get there, get there, get there. Two unbeaten Lady Varsity basketball teams from town south of Boston, Brockton and Quincy. Rebound by Tatiana Diaz for Brockton. Diaz takes it inside, lays it up and in. Brockton with a 4 0 lead. Sorry, 
Tatiana Diaz, the junior for the Brockton Lady Boxers Russia squad. Natalie, she's really fit right in since coming to Brockton this season. Yes, Despite not having played with this team in previous two years. I can't believe she's only a junior. That means next year she's going to do as, even 10 times more work than this year. Well, certainly good if you're a Lady Boxers fan to have her around for another year. Christian McDuffie with the ball down low for Brockton. Nice pass to Chanel Melton. No good rebound by Dominique Coley off the glass and in. Brockton jumps off to a 6-0 lead. Number 21, Dominique Coley with the bucket for Brockton. Brockton on top, 6-0 with 4 minutes and 36 seconds left to go in the opening quarter. Quincy has yet to amount any offense in this opening frame as we're reaching the midway point of the first quarter. Good defense played by Brockton. Chanel Melton comes up with a steal. Ultimately, the ball finds itself in the hands of Christian McDuffie. She takes it inside the paint on her own, loses control of the basketball out of bounds off of Quincy. Brockton will inbound from underneath. Dominique Coley down low, does not connect, rebounded by number 32, Nicole Jorgensen for Quincy, listed as six foot four on the roster. She is a tall girl. Deflection and steal by Christian McDuffie for Brockton, gets it to Melton, Melton stops, pops, puts it up, no good, rebounded by the six foot four, Jorgensen. She gets it over to number five, Alyssa Lydon. Some new faces in for Quincy. Alicia Dunbar from the outside. No good. Jorgensen with the rebound. No good. Dominique Coley tries to deflect that basketball. Ends up fouling Jorgensen in the process. So the six foot four, Nicole Jorgensen will be heading to the free throw line. How's this for an interesting setup of Nicole Jorgensen? Not only is she six foot four, but she's a freshman at that. She's probably not even done growing. A freshman, six four? That's a gift. How tall are you, Natalie? I'm only 5'3". She's a full foot taller than you. Now, one thing I've noticed about high school sports and high school rosters and stuff in the past, so we're going to have to do some reporting during halftime and verify this. We're going to have you stand next to her to okay. see if they're not just lying on the roster in an attempt to full intimidate. Yes, they might be trying to intimidate their opposition. Regardless, Jorgensen goes over two at the free throw line. And Brockton still has a 6-0 lead with 3 minutes and 37 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Tatiana Diaz inbounds the ball to Chanel Melton. Lady Boxers defense is doing great so far, keeping the score 6-0. It'll be interesting to see if Quincy can score any points before this quarter is out. That ball's deflected by Brockton, goes over our heads and out of bounds. 3.23 left to go in the first quarter. Brockton's defense has been playing quite well. Offensively, they've missed some opportunities down low underneath the boards, however. High two. High two. Courtney, go in. Here we go. Line over to Dunbar. Oh. Dunbar just launches that one off. Rebounded by Jorgensen. Look at her and her six foot four. And rebounded by number 24 for Quincy. Kayla McCardle gets Quincy on the board for the first time. 6-2 is your score with three minutes remaining in the opening quarter. And you alluded to it, Natalie. Nicole Jorgensen, all six foot four of her, is going to be a rebounding machine down low for Quincy. And after Brockton jumped off to a 6-0 lead, a 4-0 run now for Quincy. Once again, that is number 24, Kayla McArdle. She has all four of the Quincy president's points thus far with two minutes and 35 seconds left to go in the opening quarter. Down low, McDuffie unable to make a layup, rebounded by Quincy, looking to tie this game at six. Alyssa Lydon with the ball. Off the glass, tie ball game, 2-23. Runs of sixes so far. Brockton jumped off to a 6-0 lead. Now a 6-0 run for Quincy, and we're tied. McDuffie takes it inside for Brockton, and we have a whistle. And that is going to be a foul called against the Quincy presence for number 41, Alicia Dunbar, and Brockton will inbound from down low. She was not in the act of shooting, so it will not result in free throw points. Brockton... Inbounding, and 
Aliyah Brito gets called for traveling, and April Dingwell, the head coach of Brockton, her head nearly explodes as Nicole Jorgensen almost appeared to have Aliyah Brito in some version of a headlock. That was a little cat fight over there. Alicia Lydon with the ball gets it over to number 24, Kayla McCardle. They lose it to Leah Brito. Brito over to Christian McDuffie. McDuffie to Melton. Melton exploring her options. Takes a look and gives it over to Diaz. Back to Melton as Brockton moving the ball around the perimeter. 15 seconds on the shot clock. Down low to Brito. Brito maneuvers her way around Jorgensen. Jorgensen deflects it nevertheless. McDuffie with the rebound for Brockton. And all alone, she gave it to number 23, Chantal Jordan. And I think she's going to draw a foul. If not, the ball's just going to go out of bounds, and Brockton will have possession as it went off Quincy. I think that is the case. 126 left to go in the opening quarter. 6 6 is your score between Brockton and Quincy. And now we have Sharon Springs Steve in the game, number 12. Leah Brito. And that's going to be a foul against Jorgensen. So Brito will head to the free throw line as a result of the Jorgensen foul. Misses a first of two at the free throw line. And Brito goes over to the line. McDuffie with the rebound tries to go up with the basketball. And nothing comes of it, Quincy Ball. Jorgensen taking a breather as number 22, Sam McCardle checks in for her. Sam McCardle, 5'6". So a 5'6 player checking in for a 6'4 player. We'll see how that goes. Hey, nice hustle hey, hey, by Aaliyah hey, Brito. Ball out of bounds off Brockton. It'll be Quincy Ball. Short jumper by the Lady Box is no good. Brockton does come down with the rebound. It's Brito gets it over to Sharon Springsteed, who's checked in the game recently. Over to Chanel Melton. Melton's going to take it inside on her own, tosses it up, no good, but she draws a foul. She should be going to the line to shoot two. And that foul is going to go against Caroline McBride. So two free throw opportunities forthcoming for Chanel Melton for Brockton as Brockton is tied with Quincy 6-6 with 45 seconds left to go in the first quarter. I actually have class with Chanel Melton. She's a great girl, loves basketball since freshman year. She's devoted to it since, since day one. And Melton gives Brockton the one-point edge, 7-6, making that free throw. And she'll go two for two at the line. Brockton up by two, 8-6. Okay. Sharon Springsteen with a nice hustle for Brockton. Steals the ball over to Melton to Aaliyah Brito. Brito is going to get called for... the offensive foul, pushing off on the defender, and that will turn the ball over to Quincy. Alyssa Lydon with the ball for Quincy. 33 seconds to go. Sharon Sprigsteed once again with the fine defensive play. Punches that ball out of bounds. Relax. You don't have to worry, Alyssa. You're under control. Relax. Here we go. She's second on the clock. 
Chanel Melton doing a good job maneuvering her way into position for a layup. Misses that layup. Less than 10 seconds to go in the opening quarter. Alyssa Lydon with the ball four. Quincy gives it over to a teammate for three. No good. Rebounded by Brockton. The first quarter comes to a conclusion. And Brockton leads Quincy by a score of 8-6. to six. Brockton jumped out to a 6-0 lead. Then a 6-0 run by Quincy. Tied it. And two free throw shots by Chanel Melton give Brockton the two-point edge. 8-6 to six is your score through one quarter of play. Once again, you're watching Brockton Community Access. Peter Zimbor and Natalie Torres calling the action courtside here at Staff Gymnasium, home of the Brockton Lady Boxers. Natalie, glad you could join me here this evening for this broadcast. You mentioned moments ago that you have class with Chanel Melton. We should let our viewers know that tonight's broadcast is a joint production of Brockton Community Access Television and the Brockton High School TV Club. So we actually have a Brockton High student joining us live on the broadcast. You're a senior, correct? Yes, I'm a senior this year. Pursuing broadcast journalism in college? I hope so. I hope everything works out well, all the colleges except me, and then I'll just pursue my dream of going to broadcasting. Well, this is a good opportunity for you to get your foot in the door, if you will. Chanel Melton, you're quite familiar with from class. Tell us more about Chanel Melton that we wouldn't know from just watching her on the basketball floor. She's a really nice girl. I've had her, I have class with her freshman year, and I have class with, I have class with her today. And she's was in the zone all day today in class. She just focused on the game. She knows that it, it's very important to her, and she knows that she has to do really well. What classes are these? I have freshman year, freshman history with her, and then this year I have pre-calculus. What teachers? For freshman year, it was Mr. Connolly, and then this year it's Ms. Benucci. There you go. Anyone else you're familiar with you have in class besides Chanel Melton from uh, our roster? So far, I met Christian Duffy a few weeks ago. She's a great girl. She came up to me and was like, hey, you want to be friends? And I was like, sure. Always making us laugh. That was the conversation? That was the conversation. Do you want to be friends? Yeah, exactly. So you're friends now, I take it. Yeah. We saw, I saw her today. I was like, hey, friend. Wow. She won most comical for Brock and I. So Christian McDuffie is actually funny. Funny, yes. Actually funny. She's vicious on the basketball floor, but you're telling me socially she's very funny. She's very funny. She's very... Seems like it, but she's a bubbly, has bubbly personality. Can't tell right now because she's in the zone. She certainly is in the zone. 7.20 left to go in the first half. Brockton leads 8-6. to six. No one has scored just yet here in the second quarter. Give us an example of something humorous that Christian McDuffie has done outside of the initial meeting of her actually asking if you wanted to be friends. Well, she came up to me and was wondering, was like, oh, I like to make new friends. And I was like, okay, we can, make, we can be friends. And then um, I saw some of the videotape for the TV studio, and she was just making la making jokes to on the camera, trying to make everybody laugh. And she was the, probably the number one person there. She was right in the middle, making everyone laugh. Down low, Dominique Coley off the boards and in. Number 21, Dominique Coley with her second bucket of the evening. Brockton now has a 10-6 lead over Quincy with 6.47 left to go in the first half. Dominique Coley down low for the Lady Boxers. Quincy trying to answer back. No good. Rebounded by Tatiana Diaz for Brockton. Foul called against Brockton's Christian McDuffie. Foul not funny. But Christian McDuffie evidently is. Just her own laugh can make you laugh as well. Quincy working the ball around the perimeter, traveling called against Kayla McArdle, who takes an extra step. That turns the ball over to Brockton with 6.16 to go in the first half. Outside of the TV club, what other extracurricular activities are you involved with at Brockton High, Natalie? At Brockton High, it's mostly TV studio, and then I also do photography for the drama club, and I help out with that stuff as well for the drama. For during the musical, I take pictures I for the boards. I take pictures for during dress rehearsal. I too, let's Just go. trying to do as much as I can before I leave. Any idea where you're going for college after you graduate in May? 
Um, so far I have um, applied to Salem State, I have Ithaca College, and then a few in Florida as well. Get into the sunny, the sunny state. Not to be lost in our commentary, excellent defensive play by Dominique Coley gives Brockton the ball back ultimately. And from the corner, no good, that was Chanel Melton, rebounded by Quincy's number five, Alyssa Lydon. Good luck. Hey, Nicole, great run. And great fairly run. soon for Brockton, Aaliyah Brito will be checking right. back in, along with Gionacia Silvermore. Gionacia Silvermore back might have my be my favorite name to pronounce on this spot from the Bucks team thus far. I was looking at it while I was reading the paper and I was wondering how many times I pronounced it in my head, trying to figure out how to pronounce it. I did not know what how it went. Back door, come on. Four syllables in the first name, that's impressive. Very impressive. And then two last names together. Quincy from the corner inside the perimeter makes it a two-point game. 10 to 8 is your score. Five minutes and 15 seconds left to go in the opening quarter. Tatiana Diaz, or excuse me, the opening half. Diaz with the ball over to Melton. It's to believe that Georgia Nation is only a sophomore. And tie ball game once again as Kayla McCardle, number 24 for Quincy, lays it up and in. We're all tied up at 10 with 4.50 to go. Diaz goes to lay it in. No good. Rebounded by Jorgensen for Quincy. She loses control of it. Brockton back with the ball. And as a plethora of Brockton players vie for the basketball, they lose control of it. And they're going to call a foul against Tatiana Diaz. If you notice on the um, varsity roster for Quincy, it's all, so, it's all juniors and seniors, and then boom, one freshman, and that's a 6'4 freshman. Three-point attempt by Quincy, no good. Brockton with the rebound. Chantel Jordan with the ball. Chantel Jordan, not the only Jordan in basketball history to wear number 23, but... Wearing that jersey nicely as a number of Lady Boxes to McDuffie down low, lays it up, and in Brockton back to the lead, 12-10, with 4.05 left to go in the half. violation against Tatiana Diaz as she steps over the line. Nice new basketball court here at Staff Gymnasium. New freshly painted boxer logo in the middle of the court. A lighter shade of wood than the previous floor here at Staff Gymnasium. I actually didn't, I never noticed that. I haven't been in the gym for a while. And the ball almost hitting one of our cameramans. And he's retrieving the basketball, and he left his camera unoccupied, which looks like his camera tilted significantly forward. Get out there. If you're going to retrieve a basketball, lock the camera first. Lesson of the day. 3.19 left to go in the half. Brockton leads 12-10. Christian McDuffie with the ball. Tries to lay it in. No good. Jorgensen with the rebound for Quincy. And look at the hustle by Christian McDuffie. She gets very scrappy for the basketball on the floor. It goes off the leg of the Quincy player and out of bounds, so it'll be Brockton ball. And Christian McDuffie is on the floor and very much in pain as a result of that aggressive play for the ball. So Hopefully she's while, okay. Yes, while head coach April Dingwell and Brockton High School trainer Jerry Connor tend to Christian McDuffie on the court right now. We'll remind you that Brockton has a 12-10 lead with 3.08 left to go in the opening half here at Staff Gymnasium. Tonight's broadcast, a joint presentation of Brockton Community Access Sports and the Brockton High School Television Production Club. Peter Zimbor and Natalie Torres here calling the action. And while April Dingwell is on the floor helping tend to Christian McDuffie, her assistants Stephanie Savas and David Ray talking things over with the remainder 
of the Brockton High School Lady Boxers. Still hope Christian's okay. Looks tough. That fall was pretty tough she got. And she's getting up. What do you think it was? Speculating on injuries, not something I try to do since I'm not a medical mind, but it does appear that trainer Jerry Connor is taking a look at the right arm of Christian McDuffie. Perhaps she landed on that a tad awkwardly as she dove for the basketball on the floor. Christian's a tough girl. If that makes her cry, then it must be something serious. Because she's walking away like a superstar. That's what we call here in Brockton, Boxer Tough. And now we have Catherine Lewis on the in the game. Chanel Melton down low, no good. Chantel joint the rebound over to number 24 for Brockton. Catherine Lewis, no good. Quincy back with the ball all alone down low, but missing a layup is McCardle. Brockton with the rebound or trying for the rebound. McCardle ultimately got the rebound. And we've got a whistle. And that's going to be foul called against Brockton's Catherine Lewis. So 2.49 left to go in the half. Brockton with a two point edge, 12 to 10. And McCardle will be inbounding the basketball for the Quincy Presidents. Right there, right there. Make the easy one. Inbounds it to Dunbar. Dunbar back with the ball. Inside to Jorgensen. Turn around off the glass. No good. Gets the rebound or tries for the rebound. Out of bounds off of her hands. I believe that will be Brockton ball, but I could be wrong. Looks like they're going to say it was off Brockton and Quincy ball. called against Quincy, turns the ball over to Brockton. Aaliyah Brito checking out of the game as Dominic Coley checks back in for Brockton. We have Tatiana Diaz back in the game. Jumper, Quincy misses, Tatiana Diaz now with the ball. And out of bounds off of Quincy as it's knocked out of the possession of Tatiana Diaz, blocking the inbound from underneath. A buck 44 remaining in the opening half. Brockton leads 12 to 10. Brockton jumped off to an early 6-0 lead in this game. However, a 6-0 run followed by Quincy, and since then it's been fairly competitive. Brockton with a two-point edge at the moment. Melton inbounds it to Jordan. Jordan down low to Coley, outside to Jordan. Stops, pops, no good. Rebounded by six foot four Jorgensen for the Quincy Presidents. Back 
goes against Gionacia Silva more for Brock than offensive foul called against the boxers. 64 seconds remaining in the opening half. Brock is still on top, 12 to 10. Quincy trying to close that gap before both teams head into the locker room for halftime now, less than a minute to go in this half. Mercado with the ball for the Presidents. Nice defensive play by Dominique Coley. As she deflects the ball, comes down with the rebound, and then is fouled by Nicole Jorgensen. Jorgensen with two personal fouls here today. She'll take a breather as number 41, Alicia Dunbar, checks in for. Six foot four player, replaced temporarily by a five foot five player. Silvermore with the ball for Brockton, inside to Melton. Melton looking for help. And three second violation called against Brockton as Chantel Jordan stood in the paint too long. And that turns the ball over to Quincy. goes against Quincy's number 24, Kayla McCardle. 14.6 seconds left to go in the half. Brockton leads by two, and looking to extend upon that lead will be Chantal Jordan at the free throw line. First attempt, no good. And she goes 0 for 2 at the line, so Brockton still with the lead. 12-10, 14.6 seconds left to go in the first half. Sharon Springsteen with the rebound for Brockton, just one second on the clock. She launches that one up and actually hits the rim no good. So the first half comes to a conclusion Brock with a two-point lead, 12 to 10 is your score. And Natalie, through one half of play, your thoughts, Brockton leads by two. Brockton's defense has been doing really well, especially with the six four foot, the six foot four player. What was her name? Nicole, Nicole Jorgensen. Jorgensen. It must be really tough to block someone like that. But the girls are doing really well trying to do that. Well, Brockton has the lead as we've reached halftime. You're watching BCA Sports. We'll step aside for a quick breather. We'll be back with second half action live from Staff Gymnasium after this. And we're back at Staff Gymnasium here on Brockton Community Access Sports. Brockton Lady Boxers on top over the Quincy Presidents 12 to 10 at the half. Peter Zimbor and Natalie Torres courtside. Natalie, you've got some scoring leaders for us from the first half of play. Tell us what you got. All right, yes, I do. And then for the boxers, lady boxers, so far our leading point is for Dominique Coley. She has four points. And then Tatiana Diaz with two, Christian McDuffie with two, and then Chanel Melton with two, and also two free throws she got. And then for the presidents, Quincy presidents, we have leading is Kayla McArdle with six points, and then Elisa Leiden with four points. Thank you so much, Natalie. 12-10, Brockton on top. 7.40 left to go in the third quarter. Quincy Presidents with the basketball as they're going the opposite direction here in the second half. Nice steal by Tatiana Diaz for Brockton. All alone, lays it up easy like Sunday morning. Brockton on top, 14-10. 7.20 to go in the third quarter. Nice to see a play like Tatiana Diaz make a fine defensive play, followed up offensively with some points as we have a foul called against Dominique Coley for Brock and Quincy will inbound from the sideline. But Tatiana Diaz taking it coast to coast.
foul, this time called against Chanel Melton for Brock. So two quick fouls go against the boxers within the first minute of the second half. And Jorgensen down low, no good. Rebounded by Tatiana Diaz. Diaz looking to go coast to coast once again. More adversity in a way this time. It won't matter. She puts that one in for two. Brockton leads 16 to 10. Tatiana Diaz with four quick buckets or four quick points to open up the second half of play. Dunbar with the ball for Quincy. Gets it over to number five, Alyssa Lydon. Over to Jorgensen. She'll be fouled inside the paint. She'll be going to the line to shoot two. That's going to be against Dominique Coley. That is her second foul here in the second half alone, third in the game. So six foot four, Nicole Jorgensen at the free throw line. And Natalie, we had it confirmed during the half that she is legitimately a six foot four freshman. I was talking to one of the coaches for Quincy. It's not inconceivable she could be six foot seven by the time she's a senior. Though that remains to be seen. Jorgensen does hit one free throw shot. 6.49 left to go in the third. We'll see that her senior year when she's hopefully playing basketball still. And she goes two for two at the free throw line. Other than being a great defenseman, she's actually a really good free throw. Yeah, a lot of times you see big centers unable to get it done at the free throw line because they're just so used to put it in from down low. Shaquille O'Neal being a prime example of that. Natalie Jorgensen, or Nicole Jorgensen, excuse me, proving that theory to be wrong here in the second half. 16 to 12, Brockton on top, 6.34 left to go in the third quarter. Hey, right back to the passers. How do you think life would be different for you, Natalie, if you were six foot four? You mentioned to us you're five foot three. Well, I hope I do pretty well in basketball because I feel like that'd be the only thing I could do with being that tall. What's your basketball skills like now at five foot three? Uh, I play once a year <laughs> in the backyard only. Just got to practice my shooting. So another foul called against Chantel Melton here in Chanel Melton here in the second half. And this results in number five for Quincy heading to the free throw line, Alyssa Lyde, and she makes her first of two at the charity stripe, looking to make this a two-point game. And she does just that. 16 to 14, Brockton on top. 5.55 left to go here in the third quarter. Tatiana Diaz with the ball for Brockton, gets it over to Jordan. Jordan to Rito back over to Diaz. Diaz almost loses control of the ball, retains possession, however, and tries to dish it over to Aaliyah Brito right into the hands of the Quincy President's whistle blown. Press break, two, two. And that's going to be a push press call break. against two, two, press break. Tatiana Diaz. Sharon Springsteed will press check into the game as Tatiana Diaz two, two. takes a breather. That is her third Let's personal go. foul of the game. Rock and find themselves with some potential foul trouble brewing early on here in the second half. Lydon takes it inside for Quincy. No good, rebounded by Silvermore for Brockton. Giannisha Silvermore with the ball, gets it over to Leah Brito, stops, shoots, no good. Rebounded by Sharon Springsteen for Brockton, no good. Melton with the rebound for Brockton, puts it up, no good. She draws a foul, she should be going to the line to shoot two. And that is going to be called against number 34 for Quincy, Courtney Ryan. So Brockton ups their lead to 17 to 14. Thanks to Melton making her first to two at the free throw line, looking to make it a four point game. And she'll do just that. 18 to 14, you score Brockton on top, 5-16. Left to go in the third quarter. Melton 
Dalton with the rebound. Chantel Jordan for three, no good. Rebounded by Quincy. Coach for Quincy, Jeff Bresch, is going to call a timeout. Four minutes and 30 seconds left to go in the third quarter. Brockton leads by a score of 18 to 14. And over on the sidelines for Brockton, one thing I'm noticing, applying ice to her right arm is Christian McDuffie, who we saw go down injured, fighting for a loose ball in the first half. We have not seen her check back into the game since, and she does appear to be nursing some sort of injury. We do hope that Christian McDuffie is okay. And she's keeping her right arm elevated and looks like the right shoulder. It's a lot of ice. So head trainer for Brockton, Jerry Connor, taking good care of Christian McDuffie as she does all. Brockton High School student athletes. Poor Christian still looks like she's in a lot of pain. <laughs> Natalie Torres attracting paparazzi courtside. A lot of people want pictures of you. Yeah, I got some fans. <laughs> Traveling called against Brockton, turns the ball over to Quincy. How quickly before that's on Facebook or Twitter? It could already be up. Oh, she was probably taking a picture for it right now. Go with her, go with her, Nicole. Chanel Melton looking for help. Catherine Lewis jumper, no good. Rebounded by Dunbar for Quincy. Isn't Dunbar some kind of candy? I'm not sure. Could be wrong. Dunbar with the ball right now. That shot was like candy. Gets Quincy within two, 18 to 16. Three. 28 to go in the third quarter. Sharon Springsteed for three, no good. And that will go out of bounds off Brockton. Quincy Ball. Chantel Jordan checking back into the game as Catherine Lewis takes a breather. Jorgensen down low ties the game for Quincy at 18. Three minutes to go here in the third quarter. Melton with the basketball for Brockton. Gets it over to Sharon Springsteed. She'll try for three again, no good. Rebounded by Silva Moore down low. We have a whistle. And jump ball called. We hit, at first had dueling signals from our officials as to who the possession was. It ultimately went to Quincy. Ref looks at me as he walks by like, yeah, I know. My fault. Nice takeaway by Aliyah Brito for Brockton. Took that one right out of the hands of Jorgensen. 
Dishes it to a teammate in the corner. No good, rebounded by Dunbar for Quincy. Giving Quincy the two point lead. That was McCardle. Quincy leads 20 to 18 with a minute 40 left to go in the third quarter. Silvermore with the ball for Brockton. Off the glass, no good, gets the rebound, puts it out, no good. She'll draw a foul. She will be going to the line to shoot two. That foul called against Quincy's number 34, Courtney Ryan. So Brockton trailing by two, a position they're not used to being in in this game, with a buck 34 left to go in the third, and Gionacia Silvermore at the free throw line shooting two, trying to tie this game back up at 20. Silvermore made one of two at the free throw line. Gets Brockton within 120 to 19. A minute 27 left to go in the third. Jorgensen down low with the lay-in. 22-19, Quincy on top. Just over a minute to go in the third quarter. Chanel Melton with the ball for Brockton. Almost lost it, retains possession of the basketball, and a timeout is called by head coach April Dingwell for the Brockton Lady Boxers. 57.4 seconds left to go in the third quarter. Brockton trails Quincy by three, 22 to 19. Natalie Torres, put yourself in the position and in the shoes of head coach April Dingwell for the Lady Boxers. Why do you call that timeout? What do you say to your team? Probably right now just a lead that they haven't had in a while. Probably majority of the game and with 57.4 seconds left, she has to retry how to talk to her all over again. Try to re-motivate her team perhaps to finish off the third quarter strong before yeah. we enter the home stretch of this game. Did you know that other than um, basketball, Dingy also teaches JV soccer? I did not know that April Dingwell was the JV soccer coach. Did you call her Dingy? That's her nickname. Her nickname is Dingy. Dingy. I never knew that. Yep, that's what the basketball and soccer team call her as. And that's Dingy. how I know her as, too. She teaches at Brockton High School, if I'm not mistaken? Yes. What subject does Dingy teach? I, I might be wrong, but math. Silvermore with the ball to Aaliyah Brito down low. No good, rebounded by Quincy. And we have a whistle. And that's gonna go against Brockton. And that's gonna be against Aaliyah Brito. I remember when I was in junior high, at West Junior High, the student faculty basketball game, and I think April Dingwell was a student teacher of some sort at the time, and she played 
for the faculty basketball team. She was pretty good. She does play for the Brockton High as well, the senior against faculty game. Less than 10 seconds to go in the third, and jump ball called. Also in that student faculty basketball game, I remember there was a gem that was really good. And there was a guy who may still be at West, I'm not sure, but his name is Rodney. Played the most intense defense for a student faculty basketball game that I've ever seen. Third quarter comes to a conclusion, and Brockton still trailing Quincy 22 to 19. Brockton facing a deficit as they enter the fourth and final quarter of this game. Peter Zimbor and Natalie Torres courtside here on Brockton Community Access. Tonight's game, a joint presentation of BCA Sports and the Brockton High School Television Production Club. Natalie, tell us some of the other things that the Television Production Club does at Brockton High outside of the sparring, sparringly, outside of doing Lady Boxer basketball games sparringly. Other than this, we actually have our video yearbook that we produce the whole year, trying to have it for the seniors, something for them to take when they leave. And then we also do Boxer Highlights, which I help direct and edit. It's a TV show that airs on Channel 98, the educational access channel, for those who don't know. Yep, and then on Wednesday, we're actually interviewing our principal, who's last week, who's this, this, this is her last week of being here. Dr. Susan Zakowitz became principal midway through my freshman year of high school at Brockton High, and she'll be leaving midway through your senior year at Brockton High. It's, it's sad. I wish she was here with us when we graduated. Tatiana Diaz with the ball for Brockton. Nice pick pocket, and she's fouled. She'll be heading to the free throw line to shoot two. I wonder what Jorgensen's arm span is. Her wingspan? Yeah, quite the reach on Jorgensen for Quincy. You gotta call a foul on the inbound pass. Guys, they're, they're hacking on every catch. On every catch of the And ball another foul the called against Quincy's oh. number 20, Marissa Dwyer. And this is going to send Tatiana Diaz to the free throw line again. Misses her first attempt. She has one more. You gotta run your press breaker, Blue. So Diaz gets Brockton within one at the free throw line. 22, 21. Brockton trailing by a bucket. 7:40 left to go in the game and. We have a foul called against Brockton. That's going to go against Chanel Melton. And Chanel Melton, I think that might be her fourth personal foul of the game. Scoreboard reads her third personal foul of the game. Nevertheless, 17 fouls against Brockton here in the second half. This will be a one-on-one -on -one situation for Quincy. She makes one, she'll get another opportunity. And since she does make that one, she will get another opportunity. It's Alyssa Leiden at the free throw line. And she has Quincy up by 223. 221. Misses her second attempt. Rebounded by Melton for Brockton. Get up there. 
Jorgensen with the turnaround, no good. Silva Moore comes down with the rebound for the Lady Boxers. Gets it over to Tatiana Diaz. Silva Moore for three, no good. Nice hustle, gets her own rebound. Dishes it out to Chantel Jordan over to Diaz for three. No good. Diaz again with the ball, thought about the three, takes it inside, off the glass and in. Tie ball game at 23, 6.45 to go in the game. Tatiana Diaz with a big second half. Foul called against Dominique Coley for Brockton. That's her fourth, fourth personal foul of the game. This allows Kayla McArdle to head to the free throw line for Quincy. She'll be shooting two. How many points does Tatiana Diaz have here in the second half? She's actually leading our Lady Boxers with nine points. Nine points in the evening, seven of which came in the second half. Quincy back with the lead, McArdle at the line makes it 24-23. Nice steal by number 24, McArdle, four. Quincy lays that one in, 26-23, three-point edge for the Presidents. Diaz the ball, trying to take it coast to coast. She'll draw a foul, she'll be heading to the free throw line. Quicker every time. Kayla needs help on that, I should have people in gaps. But nobody's back in time, come on, more hustle. Six minutes to hustle. And that is Kayla McArdle's second foul. Silvermore to Jordan. Jordan is going to be fouled by McArdle. So, Chantel Jordan will head to the free throw line. She'll be shooting two. First to two is good. Gets Brockton within one. Jordan vying to tie the game for the Lady Boxers. And tie game it is, 26-26, 5.40 to go in this game. There you go. Oh, oh. Fellas, come on. They're on the hands on every catch. Every inbound pass. Very aggressive play down low between Aliyah Brito and Nicole Jorgensen. Jump ball is called. You gotta like the hustle and the aggression of your players, whether you're head coach April Dingwell for Brockton or Jeff Bresch for Quincy after that, Natalie. Diaz with the ball for Brockton. Over to Jordan. Back over to Diaz. Short jumper by Jordan, no good. She gets her own rebound. Tries to dish it out to a teammate, ends up in the hands of Alyssa Lydon for the Presidents. Nice steal by Jordan. She's surrounded by blue shirts, and she'll take a little bit of a spill as she's fouled. 
almost getting a cram and once again. You gotta watch the whole, sir. The whole the jersey. I'm hacking the rest. I'm just telling you. You've gotta watch it. It doesn't have to be a shot. To be foul, a foul called against number 24. It doesn't have to be a shot to be a foul. Kayla McArdle. Score tied at 26. Brockton looking to retake the lead. And Chantel Jordan allows them to do just that, making it 27 to 26. A very competitive game between two unbeaten teams early on in this 2012 to 2013 high school basketball season. Brockton now up by 2, 28, 26. 456 left to go in the game. And Tatiana Diaz is going to get called for the reach. And that will be her fourth personal foul of the game. Head coach April Dingwell might want to consider taking her out so that she does not foul out with there being much time left to go. And it looks like Dominique Coy will be checking in for her momentarily. One-on-one -on -one situation, Alyssa Lydon heads to the free throw line. Misses, rebounded by Brito for Brockton. Over to Melton, to Diaz. Diaz gets called for traveling. I think Dingwell's thinking about that right now, taking Diaz out. Silvermore with the steal for Brockton. Dishes it over to Jordan, off the glass, no good. Melton with the rebound, over to Diaz. Diaz taking her time. Part of a throw by And timeout called by head coach Jeff Bresch for the Quincy Presidents. Three minutes and 57 seconds remain. Brock with a two point lead, 28 to 26. And as evenly matched as this game was on paper coming in, Natalie, equally as evenly matched in real time on the floor as it's been very competitive with both teams sharing the lead at different points during this contest. Brockton currently up by two, 28 to 26, 357 to go. It's so hard to tell who can take this today. Now the team wanting to relinquish their unblemished record up until this point. However, it's gonna happen to one of these two teams. now has taken off the ice. Hopefully she'll be better in the next game. Match up, match up. Pick for the picker. Look out, look out. Come in the goal. That's the play, kid. You know it, you know it.
All alone down low is McCardell. Long bomb football style pass to her, goes off of her hands and out of bounds, turns the ball over to Brockton. Two minutes and 58 seconds left to go in this game. Brockton up 28 <laughs> Time right on, Quincy. So Jeff Brush, head coach for Quincy, calls another timeout. Two minutes and 40 seconds left to go in the game. Brockton still up by 2, 28-26. I put you in the shoes of April Dingwell earlier. Natalie, now I'm going to put you in the shoes of Jeff Brush, head coach for Quincy. He's called two timeouts within the past few minutes. Score has not changed. His team trails by 2, 28-26. Two minutes and 40 seconds to go in this game. He does not want his team to lose their unblemished record so early in the season. Natalie, if you're head coach Jeff Bresch, what do you say? And if we can listen in a little bit, what is he saying? So far listening to him during the home game, he's been calling a lot of fouls, but the refs haven't been listening. He's probably pretty frustrated about that. Bresch has been working the refs to a degree in this game. Pretty hard to block Jorgensen. I feel like it'd be probably one of the toughest things ever. for the fourth quarter. Fourth. Ding and getting a little mad. April Dingwell warned for arguing with the official as there was a call against Brockton. Looks like a Brockton player's leg was wrapped up. April Dingwell not happy with that call whatsoever. A buck 52 left to go in the game. Southeastern trying to, excuse me, Quincy trying to tie this game. Tatiana Diaz with the ball. Goes to lay it up and in, no good. and the boxers are leading by two, 28 to 26. Three-pointer by Alicia Dunbar for Quincy. Gives the Presidents the one-point lead, 29-28. A buck 18 left to go. That's what the Quincy Presidents needed this whole game. Chanel Melton with the ball for Brockton. Stops, pops, no good. Rebounded by Quincy. Tatiana Diaz with the steal for Brockton. That was our only three-pointer of the whole game today as well. And getting called for the push for Quincy is Alicia Lydon. And we will see Tatiana Diaz at the line for Brockton. Brockton trailing by one, 63 seconds on the clock. Diaz looking to tie this game and then give Brockton the one point lead. How about being in Tatiana's shoes right now? It's probably really stressful. 
She's worn blue shoes that are stylish. And in the one-on-one -on -one situation, misses. So Brockton not getting another free throw opportunity. Twinsy with the ball now. What do you think, Fox is gonna get another timeout before the quarter, before the period ends? And foul called against Brockton. And now we will see number 24, Kayla McCardle at the free throw line for And there's that Quincy. timeout. April Dingwell trying to call a timeout. You heard it, I heard it. Officials have not heard it. And she stopped attempting to call that timeout. And McCardle ups Quincy's lead to two points, 30 to 28 your score. And now with 55.2 seconds left to go in the game, April Dingwell calls a timeout. What do you think? You told me how I felt about being in Dingwall shoes. What do you think? Well, they're going to have to hope that Quincy misses the next free throw shot, box out, get the rebound. Try to mark the ball down the floor. They've gotten plenty of opportunities underneath the basket tonight. They just have to connect with them. If Quincy is to make this free throw shot, Brockton will automatically inbound from down low then I think it's pretty much the same scenario. Even though they'd still be trailing at one at that point, they'd have to play really tight defense in order to try to get the ball back. If they do have the outside shot wide open, perhaps they'll take it. But Brockton is not connected with a three-pointer yet tonight. Diaz with the ball, and we've got a whistle. Push call against Quincy's number 24, Kayla McCardle, her fourth personal foul of the game. Tatiana Diaz at the free throw line for Brockton. She's been the free throw line quite a bit here in the second half tonight. It's all up to her. Makes one, she'll get another. That makes it a two point game. Still a two-point game as she misses her second free throw shot. 48.4 seconds left to go in the game. And Tatiana Diaz commits a foul, and I believe she will have fouled out of this game. I believe that's her fifth foul, and it is. So Tatiana Diaz fouls out of the game with 48.4 seconds left to go, and she'll be replaced by Sharon Springsteed as she fouls out. 31-29 is the score. Quincy is on top, and six foot four Nicole Jorgensen at the free throw line. And as we discussed earlier on in the broadcast, is able to get the job done at the free throw line as well as inside the paint. And misses her first free throw shot. Has an interesting delivery on the basketball. Really pushes it with her right hand. Second attempt, she connects. Three point game, 32 29 Quincy. 46 seconds to go in the game. Chanel Melton with the ball for Brockton. Melton takes it inside. And she'll draw a foul. And that's called against Quincy's number 34, Courtney Ryan. And that's her fourth personal foul. So Melton will be shooting two. Lots of free throw opportunities for both teams late here in the game. Yeah. 
One point game, 32-31. McCardle for Brockton, or for Quincy rather. Over to Jorgensen. To Leiden. To Ryan. 19 seconds on the shot clock, 26 seconds on the game clock. And I think that is gonna be a foul against Brockton's Chantel Jordan, and it is, and that is gonna send number five, Alyssa Leiden, to the free throw line. Head coach April Dingwell for Brockton calls a timeout. 32 to 31 is your score, Quincy on top. 23.2 seconds to go, or seven seconds to go, 23.7, and Quincy at the free throw line. It's been a nail biter, Natalie. It has. And your first broadcast experience. My very first. Such a close game tonight. Would not surprise me in the least to see both of these teams in the MIAA playoffs at regular season's end. Misses. One point game, 22 seconds to go. Brockton trails by one. Melton with the basketball for the Lady Boxers. Over to Jordan. Jordan. Oh, Lose the ball to Quincy. And Brockton's forced to foul at midcourt with 9.4 seconds left to go in the game. And that is going to be against Gironatia Silva Moore. She had no choice. Right when Chanel, I mean, Sorry, Chantel, I swear that was a foul, but I, I guess the refs didn't see. Brockton crowd doing all they can to disrupt the flow of this Quincy player at the free throw line. And that doesn't work out so much as McCardle makes her free throw, making it 33-31. She has one more to shoot. Thirty-four, thirty-one is your score. Brock controls by three. They have to shoot a three. And head coach April Dingwell is going to call a timeout. Brockton trails by three. 34-31. 3.7 seconds left in the game. Head coach April Dingwell calls a timeout. When Brockton breaks from this timeout, they'll be inbounding from the sideline at their end of the court and trying to get a furious three-pointer off to tie this game and head into overtime. Interestingly, Natalie, did it seem to you that Brockton was going for the three just there? I actually thought they actually were at that moment. Was it Jordan that had it with her? It looked it like they were inside the perimeter, may not have known where they were on the floor, and perhaps that's why April Dingwell called that timeout so feverishly. That was very smart of her, a great coach. Out that Quincy knows what's going to go on right now. They're probably going to cover the three pointers. Hey, 
Courtney, watch out. It's your girl, Kayla. Her, her, uh, Kayla, Kayla, your girl. Your girl. Melton with the ball. Three seconds. Good defensive play by Jorgensen for Quincy. The game is over. And the Quincy Presidents defeat the Brockton Lady Boxers by a score of 34 to 31. Quincy improves to 3-0 in the season. Brockton falls to 2-1 in a very competitive contest. Natalie, your final thoughts on this game? Sad, because I am myself a boxer, but it was a tough game. They both worked very, very hard. Your final score from Staff Gymnasium, the Quincy Presidents 34, the Brockton Lady Boxers 31, in a very competitive affair. For everyone here at Brockton Community Access and the Brockton High School TV Production Club, my broadcast partner, Natalie Torres, I'm Peter Zimbor. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time here on BCA Sports. Goodbye, everyone. Good job. Thanks.